Well, this is my stereo system, and these are its speakers. The big one and the small one on top. I also have some there. Now, it works all pretty well, but the problem is that there is something wrong with one of these big speakers. And uh, yeah, you can hear that if I turn the balance to the left speaker and disable the ones that are on top. You have that crackling? And it doesn't really seem to be playing uh, yeah, some high noises, so there is something wrong with the speakers. By the way, I got those for free. Those are quite good speakers actually, and it seemed that there was a tiny fault in there, which at first I didn't really hear heard because of that. But yeah. Ah, now they actually seem to work. Hmm, odd. There we go, now it has completely stopped playing the high pitch noises. Well, sound at least, and just hear the bass inside of it. Well, it actually should sound rather like that. Well, let's get one of those down from the shelf. So, as you can tell, I've taken down the speaker from uh, up there and hooked up a different uh, stereo to this system. A self built, well, rebuilt stereo, actually. And if we can hear, yeah, there is something clearly wrong with the audio. It doesn't matter what adjustments I make. It's pretty much the only the only speaker that's actually really working is the big one down here, which is uh, doing all the bass. The others don't really appear to do anything. So I'm just letting this thing play an endless loop while I open it up. And yeah, see if we can find a broken cable or anything like that. Because well, I don't believe that all of these are broken actually. Well, let's just get in there and uh, probe around a little. I'm just gonna leave the whole thing powered up. Yeah, there's nothing really too dangerous uh, with the uh, cables themselves. Now the whole thing is in itself pretty modular, as you can see there are just some screws in the back, take those out and the whole back panel pops out. And if you really want to go into detail, here are all the infos about these speakers. So they are, uh, nominal uh, power is 50 watts and a maximum power of 70 watts. And 4 to 6 ohms, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was actually worrying that my big stereo couldn't handle those, but it does a maximum of 120 watts and uh, so far I haven't gone so high that I've actually blown the fuses inside of it. Yeah. Also, if I have them running on full power, yeah, I'm very much pissing my neighbors off, so I'm not actually doing that. Oh yeah, and if you can probably tell, yeah, these speakers have seen better days. And uh, it also seems I'm not the first person in there since this is definitely not original. If it was original, they would have actually used screws on here, but uh, yeah, they just decided uh, not to do that. And also, I think I should replace uh, those screws since yeah, somebody has definitely used the wrong type of screwdriver to open this thing up. I've got the right size here, so... Uh, <laughs> but opening something like this is almost impossible. And yeah, I do have wood screws, so... No problem with that. Alright, let's try to get inside this thing, which is actually quite of a challenge since I have opened it once. And it's really, really, really difficult, trust me. Because uh, <laughs> you've really got to somehow get in there and try to pull it out without actually breaking the wood. <sighs> Jump cut. Alright, it's quite difficult to actually get in these because there's a hidden screw somewhere and you have to take that out and the back panel actually pops out. Alright. So, we are in, and uh, that has been made afterwards, that hole is, was definitely not before there, since the original connector 
seems to be one of these crappy things. Well, at least I can say thank you, previous owner, that you did that upgrade. But you did not do it good. At least. Well, since, uh, yeah, I would have still liked to see some screws in here. Anyways. Uh, now, what's quite weird, actually, is there is a socket board inside of these uh, speakers for some reason. Well, um, my assumption, actually, is that this is a uh, audio filter, so that it gives the correct frequency to the corresponding speakers. And what I would just think is that there's a cable break somewhere in the ones that go all the way over there. Or this one below here. Well, since those all seem to be okay, I have no idea how the board is held in place. It seems to be glued down. But yeah, I'm just gonna check everything. I, I mean, I don't believe that those capacitors here are dead. I mean, just look at those huge beasts. Those don't. They're gonna be all okay. No leakage or anything visible on uh, the sides. Just some dust in here. And well, I mean, the other speaker works just fine, so. <laughs> and it's exactly the same in there. Well, anyways, let's just get all this uh, insulate insulation material here out of the way. Yes, this is actually insulation material and, uh, that's used to. Uh, keep heat from escaping in buildings and uh, I don't know why you put would like to put that in a speaker actually but well uh, I'm not the one who made this so it's that company so their choice their decision um, can't argue with that all right uh, so it seems the speakers are just all the way hidden back there wow they put a lot of this. Ah, oh, it's dusty. Oh, you shouldn't not breathe this. Ew. I hope that it doesn't contain asbestos or anything. In German, we call it glass fuzz of all. I have no idea how that stuff is called in English. It's just disgusting, and you get all that stuff stuck on your fingers and. Ah! Yeah. So, well, let's just have a look inside here and see if there is a cable break or something. Or it could be just there's something wrong with the board. Bad solar joint, or a short somewhere. I'll go and have a look at both. I mean, none of those three speakers seem to be working, so yeah. I'm gonna hook a view meter up to each channel and see what uh, happens. Or, another thought is that the guy get, got the polarity wrong. But it doesn't really seem like that. I mean, the red one is the positive. But the red one also connects to the proper one. Or does it? Nope, it doesn't. It seems to be connected to the negative. That could maybe be the issue. Let's have a listen. If that does change anything. Since I actually use polarized audio cables, let's have a listen if that does actually change anything. Hold on. Nope, sounds just the same. And I know how that is supposed to sound, so yeah. It's just the big sample that's doing everything and not those three in there. Don't do anything at all. So I'm just gonna have a look at the solar on those. And uh, then take the board out, if that's actually possible. I hope they didn't actually glue it down, that would be stupid. But eh. Let's see. Well, I have resolded the entire board, just apply new solar to every single contact. Because I couldn't really figure out what was wrong, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just then later gonna do some measurements. And you may hear that the speaker sounds different. Well the only thing I have done as right now is since the big uh, bass well, the big subwoofer in here, uh, it, it really mostly goes over all the noise so that I can't really tell um, if the others are actually working. I just have removed this one, uh, well, I just have desoldered this one just to check uh, if anything else actually works. And it turns out that this one here also works. So I'm gonna disconnect this one here as well 
and see if that does make any difference whatsoever. So that's the one that should be inside of this box. Oh, I should hopefully not get mixed up by the contacts. Ah, okay. Good, I'm not gonna remove the red one because uh, the silver red one is also all there. So that one. Let's see if the, it, removing that uh, makes a difference and we won't be able to hear anything anymore. Alright, with that one also removed, yeah, this is pretty much what I expected. And uh, now I'm not hearing anything anymore from those speakers. And uh, what I could do now is check the resistance of them to see if those two are actually connected. Because if they are connected, I should be able to measure a resistance on the... Uh, input of the speaker actually. But then I'm also gonna go ahead and dig out the oscilloscope and probe if we actually even have an output that is going to these speakers because I mean it could also be that somebody has destroyed these coils in here. I mean see those very thin wires on the outside? Well they are actually behind some glue so um, those should not actually be damaged. Huh, odd. Well, it does appear that the one in the bottom here actually has a break. So, yeah, and the one in the top... Oh, that's it! Didn't even have to take the speaker apart, I just found the issue. Wow. Hmm, silly me! Put in way too much work than necessary. Ha! Great, so what I'm going to do now is just we'll remove those speakers out of the system well so that I have better access to them and uh, try as good as I can to maybe make a bodge solder in there so I can get uh, good contact on those again damn I should have seen that sooner hmm. so I would have saved myself a lot of work if I actually looked close up on those hmm. anyways I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, leave these two here uh, desoldered and uh, yeah try to mix some bottle soldering with some very thin wire and see what happens and there we go I have re uh, soldered the speaker does look uh, <laughs> you can really see that bodge soldering in there doesn't really look too nice but eh, it's as good as I can do it because, I mean, it would make more sense to just buy the new speaker, screw this one out and put the new one in. But, yeah, I just don't really feel like spending money at the moment for this. So, yeah, it's time for number two, which is going to be more difficult because there's less cable. Oh, well, let's see what we can do. Alright, that was actually quite difficult because, well, uh, both cables broke. And, uh, yeah, since they broke very, very close to the coils of the speaker, I actually had to take it out so I have more room to actually work with. Um, yeah, you're seeing that my bodge soldering here is here on its absolute highest level. And that I am literally on top of the uh, cloth there for the speaker. But that shouldn't matter, I, act I think. It should work just fine. So, well, let's put it back together and fingers crossed this thing may still work. Or work again. Well, listen to that. It works. Works again. Beauty. This one is also fixed. It may not look nice, but eh, I don't really care. I'm just going to put a... Small, uh, some small droplets of super glue on those uh, soldering bridges, bodges that I made, just so that it doesn't break that easily. Since well, there is vibration in here, even though it's at a very high frequency, but still, yeah, <laughs> may not look nice, but I really don't care. And hey, I didn't spend anything on this; just used some old USB cable. And that's it. Well, that is actually quite an improvement. Everything, well, almost everything is back together, so you have to put the back of it in. 
but wow, listen to that. That is a huge difference. All right, everything is put back together. New screws are also inserted. As you can see, not the stupid worn out ones anymore. That's a lot better. And yeah. So that was a successful repair actually. Even though, yeah. It's not exactly the best way to do it, but uh, yeah, if you don't want to spend money on it, uh, it's certainly a way to do it. So now I just have to put it up there again. Gonna be fun. Alright, so I have put the speakers back up. Currently this one is playing. This is the one that has no issues whatsoever. And I'm now gonna adjust the balance to the one that is actually, well, had the defect. Let's have a listen. Just sounds as good. So yeah, that's it. Both of them work. And if I add my two little speakers up there, it sounds even better. So yeah, that was definitely a complete successful fix, even though it was quite annoying to get that thing back down there, disassemble it, reassemble it, and put it back up. But yeah, in the end, well, it was worth it.